Hi, I'm Zachary Cowan, the author of the Study Daily Books, and thanks for joining me for a look at Doctrine and Covenants section 88, part three. In part two, we ended with the promise that the Lord said, look, eventually he's going to visit every kingdom and creation that he has. But sometimes in between those visits, it may be possible for us and for others to feel that there is a great distance between us and God and that this space is almost insurmountable and that we feel that it's really, really far and that he's very, very far away. So today, the Lord has promised, here are some principles that in between hit times of his visits, you can use to collapse the distance, to bring ourselves and to bring Jesus Christ closer so that we can feel him even when he's not with us, that we can have his abiding influence. These are awesome principles and they work. So go ahead, pause your video and check out Doctrine and Covenants section 88 verses 62 through 69 and look for principles that collapse the distance between us and Jesus Christ. Hey, thanks for studying. So some of the principles that are really, really important, like in verse 63, is that if you draw close unto God, he'll draw close unto you. And many of those things that he brings up is just praying for the right things and praying for things that he wants you to pray for. And the only way to do that is to get the spirit and then it starts to happen. He talks about keeping your eyes single to his glory. Like, and what does that even mean? It means that's what you focus on. See, it's really hard for people, some can do it, but to focus on two different things at the same time. Your eye shows you what you focus on. So as we're focusing on the Savior, everything else will fall into place. And then he says, here's a couple of other things that if you're not careful, it will cause you to not fill my spirit. If you're idle, if we waste our time and we waste our thoughts, we're going to struggle with that. And then check out verse 69, because it's got the idle thoughts and then excess of laughter and people... Anytime I talk about this, students are like, I don't get this. God doesn't want us to laugh. No, it's, ex it's excessive laughter. In the footnote, it talks about reviling or revolting laughter. Laughter mocking and making fun of others. Inappropriate laughter. Laughter about things that we shouldn't be laughing about. It's not that God doesn't want us to be laughing and having a great time. It's that it's the right kind of laughter. Now, <clears throat> When we do this, when we've gotten closer to him, he's going to immediately say, it's time to go forth and to do the work and to really go out and to teach the gospel effectively. And so he's going to change things. A few years ago, the missionary age was lower, both for young men and for young women. As the general authorities and apostles started to talk about that event, they were only quoting two scriptures about why they did that. And it was verses 72 and 73, where the Lord said, in my time, I'm going to hasten my work to bring it to pass and to move it forward. That's incredible, this, this idea of hastening the work. The Lord has said that, that he's going to hasten his work and push it forward. Well, then the fear becomes, if he's hastening his work, taking longer strides, moving his work forward faster, there's a fear that we might fall behind. So he's given us several principles now to make sure that we can keep tempo with him as he hastens his work. So pause your video, check out verses 74 through 86, and look for what other principles the Lord wants us to use to make sure we can keep tempo with him as he hastens his work to be accomplished. Thanks for studying. I hope you saw the Lord's uh, push for us to maintain tempo with him. He wants us to run with him and to be with him all along it by organizing ourselves and also gathering together with each other because it's not just enough for us to keep tempo. He wants us to help others. So how do we do that? 77, 78, we teach the doctrine to each other. And not just that, but then he encourages us all the way through verse 79 and 80 that we teach everything, the perplexities of nations. We talk about things. We study geology, we learn about languages, we talk about cultures and nations. 
and history and wars. And we learn, we learn, we learn, we learn. And then we become more useful in that. The Lord tells us to abide on things, tarry on things, stay with things, and to not become entangled with certain things. All of this in hopes that we can continue to hasten the Lord's work. And what is that work? It's to help people find joy in the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they can have faith and their faith will lead them to take actions like to repent and to forgive and to be kind and to be hopeful and prayerful, to have mercy and justice. And as they become like the Lord, they can abide with the Lord and others can feel the joy and presence of the Lord. Let's keep pace. Here we are. The Lord is hastening his work and we can feel it as we collapse those distances and keep a tempo with him as he marches his work forward. Thanks for studying and thanks for trying to keep tempo with the Lord. See you next time.